This is Robert St. John in the NBC newsroom in New York. Ladies and gentlemen, we may be approaching a fateful hour. All night long, bulletins have been pouring in from Berlin claiming that D-Day is here, claiming that the invasion of Western Europe has begun. Uh, let me read you several of the latest bulletins. One says... That it... So this is That's All Brother, the airplane that led the D-Day invasion. This C-47 took more than 800 airplanes over the Normandy coastline the night of June 5th, 6th, early morning hours of June 6th, I guess you might say, and uh, began basically the liberation of Europe. Uh, prior to this airplane, there were flights of pathfinders that went over to mark drop zones, but with the arrival of this airplane came 13,000 American airborne troops uh, basically seeking to eke out a toehold on the European mainland ahead of the arrival of the invasion force in their landing craft at 6 a.m. So the aircraft was actually located by an Air Force Historical Research Agency employee, an active duty uh, Air Force historian. And he basically was looking for the history of a particular individual who'd been associated with his unit, a man named John M. Donaldson. And in looking for the history of this man, he found out that John Donaldson led the 438th Troop Carrier Group during World War II. And while going through the group's history to determine what Donaldson had done, which missions he had flown, and perhaps why he'd been there, uh, they stumbled into a reference to the tail number that Donaldson flew on the night of June 5th and morning of June 6th. And it listed this air, aircraft, 4292847, as being the airplane he flew when he led the D-Day invasion. And so additional research on the part of Matt Scales uh, determined that the airplane had survived the war. Like so many DC-3s and C-47s, it had gone on into a variety of civilian tasks after the war, 16 different owners, but ultimately it had wound up in the boneyard at Basler Turbo Conversions, where the airplanes are cut up, uh, modified, you know, in some ways, it's amazing what Basler does. They give these airplanes a new lease on life, but Matt was horrified to think that the airplane that had led the invasion, this incredibly significant piece of American history, was actually going to await that fate. So he reached out to as many news agencies as he could think of to try to encourage them to run the story, to put out the call for help, to let people know that the airplane was in dire need. And uh, the CAF was just fortunate enough to basically catch one of the few news outlets that ran it. Right here at Whitman Field, the airport blog was one of only two or three news agencies to pick the story up. As a Canadian, moving to the US has been an interesting experience. I've never experienced patriotism like what you see in Americans here. And so I knew there was no way that an airplane this historic and this significant was not only missing for 70 years, but there's no way anyone would cut it up. And that basically began about a two-month process of trying to make a determination about whether or not that airplane was really the airplane that led the invasion. And more than that, uh, how we at the Commemorative Air Force could be involved in saving the airplane. And the uh, process was pretty slow going to begin with because uh, a lot of clerical errors during the war listed the wrong aircraft as the leader of the formation. They mentioned that Donaldson had flown his airplane, an airplane called the Bell of Birmingham that was known to have been lost after the war. So it seemed that not only were we going to have to prove the airplane led the invasion, but there was going to be a bit of rewriting the history to some extent. Uh, we were very fortunate though, about halfway through the search, stumbled into a piece of film reel that actually showed the airplane being loaded on June 5th. As the camera panned along, our serial number was clearly visible and so was the nose art. We later learned that they painted it on there as a message to Hitler, based on a Mae West song. Uh, That's All Brother was intended to live on in the newsreels and eventually, hopefully, make its way to Hitler, according to the crew. This airplane was a workhorse right from D-Day on. I mean, not only does it fly after the war, but it flies every major Allied airborne operation that's executed following D-Day. Uh, so it goes on to fly in Dragoon, the invasion of southern France, and then in Market Garden, which is obviously the famous Bridge Too Far tale, uh, flies Operation Repulse, which is the dropping of supplies to the encircled troops at Bastogne uh, during the Battle of the Bulge. And then it goes on to uh, fly Operation Varsity, which is the last major Allied airborne operation, and it's the ultimate crossing of the Rhine. 
This is about the third year of the restoration and uh, 16,213 hours have gone into the airplane up until this point and uh, we expect that it will take about 19 to 20 to finish the aircraft. Um, the incredible technicians over at Basler Turbo Conversions have poured their heart and soul into this airplane and we just couldn't have done it without them. Uh, no one has ever undertaken a restoration of a C-47 on this scale or this magnitude. I would say the only people who've had one further apart are Douglas. We still need everyone's help and support. We're committed to taking the airplane to Normandy in 2019 for the 75th anniversary of the D-Day invasion. That's the last major commemoration where appreciable numbers of veterans will be able to be in attendance. And your contribution at this critical point, just prior to the engines running this fall, will actually help keep us on track to, to fulfill that commitment.